Hi, I'm Ed, welcome to Minnesodes, and this is the 40k Retro Restoration Project 2nd Edition. This is the first in a series of videos in which I'll be building, painting and playing my way through the original starter box of Warhammer 40,000. When I was a wee lad, I owned this starter set and was obsessed with it. I loved the books that came with it and spent many hours poring over the cool background material and art. But to my lasting shame, I never really painted or played with the miniatures from the original box game. 28 years later, I think it's time to correct this. I emptied out the contents and started to organise them using baggies and rubber bands. Whilst doing this, it became apparent that my box also contained the contents of the Dark Millennium expansion for the game, which was a nice little bonus. So pretty much everything was there out of the original. All the dice, counters, templates and terrain. All 40 Gretchen, 17 of the 20 Orcs, plus their card Dreadnought, and about half of the Marines. Not bad going. Before diving in, I made a list of what needs to be done. I did this in order of what I thought would be the most logical and what would keep me motivated, essentially keeping the most gruelling task, painting the 40 Gretchen, until the end. The first step would be restoring the card stock terrain. I traced the outline of my terrain piece on foam core, then cut it out carefully using a craft knife. Using my trusty glue gun, I stuck each piece securely in place, making sure that each corner was roughly at a 90 degree angle. I then repeated this about 20 times. I was pretty pleased with where this was headed, but felt that they'd look better mounted on foam core too. To do this, I used the corners of the foam core as a guide, leaving a generous amount of space, and then traced the outline of my piece on the board, along with some jagged edges to represent the ragged footprint of the ruin. After trimming the edge of the base, I cut diagonally across all the edges to give it a nice rounded feel. And after repeating that 20 times, I was left with a hobby desk of much sturdier looking terrain. This is Mod Podge, essentially a PVA and glaze secret source that will strengthen the vulnerable parts of the build. I mixed it up in a 50-50 ratio with grey acrylic paint and applied it to all the exposed foam, taking care not to get any on the cardstock as I went. Whilst the Mod Podge dried, I got together all the bits I would need to make this look like a ruined building. Some wire that I had hanging around, some scenic razor wire, wire mesh, chopped up cork for masonry, along with some similarly chopped up foam core, a bag of clutter that looked promising from my bits box, army painter basing material, and builder's sand for different grades of texture on the base. Using superglue, I attached cocktail sticks to the foam, pressing them securely in place. I did the same with short bits of wire, representing the rebar sticking out of the structure. I also stuck the mesh and razor wire securely in place with dots of glue to suggest hastily erected defences. I then stuck bits of cork to where I reckoned rubble would have collected the most, such as at the corners and the most collapsed parts of the structure. When the superglue had dried, I applied a slightly watered down mix of PVA with an old brush, taking care not to get any on the wire, cocktail sticks or cork, or on any vertical surfaces. I then poured the builder's sand liberally on top. After a minute or so, I shook off the excess and applied generous blobs of superglue for the chunkier ground cover to go on. Now I was free to add some interest to the piece. In this instance, I chose this unfortunate orc's skull. Before painting could begin, I watered down the PVA even further and created a kind of gluey solution and coated all of the basing material with it using a pipette. This was a very messy process and moved quite a bit of stuff around, but I wasn't too fussed. Next time, I might consider using a rattle can of lacquer or try thinning the solution a bit more. One quick blow dry later and it was ready for priming. Using cheap white acrylic paint from Hobbycraft, I painted the whole base using a dabbing motion to get into all the uneven, hard to reach bits and also to avoid disturbing any of the ground cover. After some drying time, it was time to add some colour. First up, I used Drakenhof Nightshade. I applied this wash to all the white parts liberally, except for the wire bits, and was super cautious any time the brush might come into contact with the cardstock. 
Before this first wash had a chance to dry, I used Agrax Earthshade to hit the edges of the terrain, including where the rubble had built up. For the wire, I used one of my favourite washes, Coat Darm's Brown Wash. The amount of pigment in this wash is very high and makes for a great aged, rusted effect. The only thing left to paint now was the inside wall, which I painted with several coats of the Mod Podge Grey Mix. After drying, it looked rather flat compared to the rest of the piece, so I sponged the wall carefully with different shades of grey and brown to create the illusion of an eroded and pockmarked surface. I then added some streaky grime using my Agrax Earthshade. Now for the final touch, I printed out some 40k imagery which I painted with Ardcoat and then cut them out and stuck them on with PVA. Once the whole terrain piece was dry, I gave it a quick blast with Halford's matte lacquer spray to seal in the grim dark. So there we have it, a cardstock terrain piece complete with a detailed and thematic textured base. Just another 19 pieces to go. And many, many hobby hours later, here are all of the terrain pieces together. So that's phase one of this project complete, and I'm pretty pleased with the results. Well done me, it's cat time. In the next instalment, I'll be turning my attention to the miniatures, working my way through 20 goth boys. I'll see you then, and if you enjoyed what you saw just now, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and feel free to comment on the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts. See you next time, bye!